Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You're born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news. It's Native News Today. Gerald Wofford along with Jason Salzman, and we're very glad to have you with us as we get ready for a big episode here. we got lots of things to talk about, so let's get started. That's right. As always, we appreciate your time this afternoon, and uh, Mother Nature being a little bit nicer to us as fall as cooler temperatures here, almost feeling like fall out there. And, we again appreciate you sharing your time with us this afternoon to watch another episode of Native News Today. You're exactly right, Gerald. A little reprieve from the summer heat, but uh, definitely won't be a reprieve from lots of great Native American information, stories out there going on this week. We've got a plethora of it for you here on this week's episode. So uh, we got a little bit of everything, actually. We'll uh, continue with a little bit of the action that the Creek Nation is taking with the fire aid, and a little bit different uh, stance because it's a department, but all that and more this week. Uh, uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after our first break. You watch Native News today. Bumagasam gadat, ibufanga, nage adigat, punhayadi omega, ajayi jidet omis. Tayo snop. That's true. Throughout the generations, our elders have taught us to preserve, share, and more importantly, protect the abundant natural resources we have here in Oklahoma. We are the original environmentalist and protector of these resources. The Muscogee Creek Nation believes tribal and state governments must work together to ensure future generations will have clean air and clean water as the ultimate legacy. What is good for Oklahoma tribal nations is good for all Oklahomans. Remember, tribes are truly the original Oklahomans. And welcome back to Native News Today. Jason Salzman, Gerald Wofford. There's so many topics that affect Indian country, so many important topics. One of them, of course, is the environment. Absolutely right, Gerald. You know, we take care of the land. The uh, land, uh, we belong to the land. The, the land doesn't belong to us is the Indian way, is the way we look at it. So definitely the tribes becoming more and more adept to environmental services, things of that nature. 17th Annual Intertribal Environmental Conference hosted by the Cherokee Nation at Hard Rock Casino this last week. Back in 1993, there was an Intertribal Environmental Council, that's what ITEC stands for, it was formed. Um, today there's 42 member tribes, the tribes are located here in Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. And so our office, Cherokee Nation is the lead office for ITEC. We provide technical services in the environmental field and we are trying to help these tribes develop their capacity so that they are able to protect their natural resources, they're able to go out and protect the environment and their tribal lands and not only that, for the health and well-being of their tribal citizens too. So that's our ultimate goal and what we're trying to achieve. It's our 17th annual conference. I've been at this uh, working probably about uh, close to 20 years now. So I have had the honor, not just the, the opportunity, but the honor to watch environmental programs expand for tribes from its infancy stage to the advanced levels that, you know, that are equivalent to what you would find, you know, in, say, uh, national scientific laboratories that are doing research, uh, and that, that level of work, that level of expertise, it exists in any country. Now that's the rewarding part, to be able to see it, um, the programs advance to that level. In addition to watching the programs grow is what you're doing is you're protecting the cultural aspects, you're protecting the, the tribe's uh, traditions, their culture, their heritage because that all interplays with the environment and you know if you lose or have injuries to your natural resources then you have a direct effect on your tribe's culture too. So that in addition to protecting tribal sovereignty, protecting citizens' uh, health and well-being, you know, it's also, it also has that aspect of protecting the cultural heritage to each tribe. You know, for example, water rights. You, know, you see a lot of uh, um, 
There's the advertisements, there's the, the PR work that's going on by the Chickasaws and the Choctaws. You know, most definitely tribes need to be paying attention uh, because there's, there's precedent setting uh, types of action activities that are taking place. And protection of tribal sovereignty, you know, that's the, the ultimate uh, goal, you know, I would think that every tribe would want to focus on. But in addition to that, what is going on right now as far as uh, the rights of tribes, the rights of tribes to protect their own natural resources and their own tribal lands and not being governed by any other governmental entity other than you know, the tribe itself. So yes, it's very important to keep up to date on what's going on. You know, everything out there uh, going good in the West Coast, everybody out at the California Creek Association doing great, and we are very glad to be able to bring you this story now from out in California. Gerald, we go out every year and it's a great day. Yeah, we uh, definitely connect with the California Creek Associ Association out there on the West Coast. Our own uh, cameraman Darren DeLong going out there and visiting out there, administration here, visiting with the leaders out there. So a good time had by all by the California Creek Association. As you know, the Creek Indians came out here a long time ago uh, during relocation, probably 50 years ago, and they came out here to work during the Depression. Uh, they're still out here, they're tough as nails, and any time they invite us, we should uh, accommodate their wishes. They're Creek Indians, it's like you and I are back in Oklahoma. As, as Leah, Eli Grayson mentioned, there's a lot of technology available to all of us today, and I believe the tribal website that we have, thanks to your department, is uh, excellent. Keeps getting better and better, and the people have access to internet, they have access to telephone contact, each National Council person has a website on the, uh, the tribal website and, and so it's important that we make this information available to them and it's also important that they feel uh, free to contact us anytime. When we, when we come out to places like this it's easy for these the tribal citizens to associate a face with a name from the back. Uh, most of them will never forget hearing Chief Tiger speak today. Uh, we almost had a quorum of the National Council out here uh, with seven people. Uh, I believe that it's important to make them more visible. And, and this, is a, this event today is a good example of why we need that. The people in here uh, today saw their representatives in action and they uh, uh, have access to them. And I believe that uh, these kinds of trips strengthen and foster the relations, relationships we have now and in the future. For me, personally, it means that uh, they're, they're coming out to uh, uh, meet the people and uh, share or listen on uh, the concerns of the people. And for the people in the area, it gives, us, gives them a chance to meet the administration, uh, the new staff, new chief and his staff. Uh, last year there was a lot of people, and this year it's about the same amount. Uh, so it is a good, a good group. We get people from all over the state. Um, I noticed there's some people there from Northern California and from further south in Southern California. Jason, we know the this month of August has really been tough on Oklahomans everywhere. The fires and everything, just really been a tough time. It really has, Gerald. People out there still hurting, uh, still needing things, uh, basic human mm -hmm. needs, uh, hygiene products, clothing, school supplies even. And with that in mind, the Crete Nation certainly jumped in to help with uh, hydrating the firefighters and whatnot. You saw that on our program here last week. Now, reintegration program at Muscogee Creek Nation, having a drive coming up and they need your dona donations. Our program is based upon a Second Chance Act program. Uh, that's what we do for a living. When the, the tornadoes came through Joplin, our program went up there based upon second chances. We went up there and we wanted to help the, the community of Joplin out, give them a second chance and, and try to revitalize them. We knew that the tribe was going to help out with the wildfires because it's within Creek Nation boundaries. But we also felt that our program just wanted to go out there and, and be in addition and help out any way that we could. So basically that's what we're trying to do is, is just get some donations to come through. Uh, school supplies, we know that are needed. We know hygiene kits are big things that we want to also help out. Uh, bedding, towels, anything to that effect that, that just is a normal day-to-day -day thing that we use. We want to try to get those as donations, get them to come through our program. We can take donations up to October, August the 21st. We can here within our program at reintegration. After that, we're going to have a box trailer set up at the mound building in, at Creek Nation. 
on August the 22nd. We're going to take donations there, and on August 24th, we're going to go up and we're going to deliver all these these donations in the Olive Manford area, up around where the wildfires were. We're also going to do cook out some hot dogs, provide water, chips, pops, right. things of that nature. Or you can call our office. It's 918-652-2676. You can ask to speak to anybody here. Everybody is aware of our program. This is something that we've talked about through our office, and we're, we're pretty excited about being able to go out there and donate. Well, a lot of things happening out there in Indian Country. We got a chance to go over to Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma Indian Gaming Association Conference happening this past week, visiting with Miss Margo Gray. Yeah, and that's always good to visit with Margo. She does so many great things with the NCAI ED, uh, the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development, and uh, certainly keeps her busy as well as Horizon Engineering here in Tulsa, uh, the business that she runs. So Margo, uh, recent recipient of a national award again. So she's doing great things. It's always great when you can visit with her. Well, a lot of great things happening here at the American Indian Gaming Association, the conference in Oklahoma City. I'm talking with Miss Margo Gray. She's with the National Center for American in Indian Enterprise Development. I want to make sure I say that right. Margo, we appreciate your time and uh, tell us more about this unique organization. Gerald, we have been around for 43 years. Um, you know, we have a lot of the American Indian chambers, but this is, this is just one level up. The National Center has been around and as they started where they wanted to help artisans, but it has grown to a multi-level uh, of every industry of business in Indian country. We represent a half a million Indian-owned businesses nationwide, which means Indian economies are moving and as they've been growing. And uh, Oklahoma, you know, we all know the, the numbers, we're the number one uh, business in, in Oklahoma. But on the national level, you know, you look at oil and gas, construction, gaming, we're here at the gaming center, and um, it's, it's really something that is helping create jobs, create uh, hope in our communities, and uh, entrepreneurism, and that's what we're about. And so we're here at the RES, uh, we're going to be hosting a RES conference in Oklahoma, and um, I'm showing the card right here. And we're excited because one of the things we do is we recognize the accomplishments of not only our um, our top 40 under 40, and it is uh, each year we do this, and it's just amazing the stories of where Indian Country is going, and we also have a small conference that's with that. But we want to create opportunity for business owners and tribal enterprises and the tribes to connect, so we can put Indian people and businesses to work. And that's really what is going to make a difference in our communities. We have an annual event we've been doing in Las Vegas for uh, 27 years now. And it was very well attended. But we listened to what everyone said. Can you take some of the RES conferences, which is Reservation Economic Summit, and put it into different Indian communities? So, of course, you know, being from Oklahoma and uh, with our new uh, President CEO Gary Davis is better known as Lightfoot. Uh, he's just done a phenomenal job for us and both of us being from Oklahoma and we also know that gaming is big, tourism is big, construction is big, but this is a national event and that's why it's going to really impact our communities. So if you're a, a native owned business, you want to do work work, do work with the tribes or the casinos, that would be a place because we will do a business matchmaking. And I'm very proud to say that the National Center has expanded and we do have a Tulsa office. So business owners, contact us. You can go to our website at ncaied.org. And uh, we look forward, and you, you all need to come over there and, uh, and be at our event. It's going to be at the Hard Rock and it'll be the dates are November 14th and 15th. And, uh, we're going to have uh, Native Americans, leader, tribal leadership is very strong attendance, and so um, it's going to be exciting. We're excited for it. Well, as we mentioned, Jason, so many topics in Indian country, and a lot of them certainly are controversial. We pulled this story out from one that we aired a few years ago concerning the Porch Bend Creek in Alabama. Yeah, and the Creek Nation this week coming out with a statement from the principal chief uh, condemning the uh, the ongoing construction that's going on from the Porch Creeks for a casino on Hickory Ground, our ceremonial ground. This was shot six years ago. We've been fighting this battle this long and it aired on one of the very first episodes of Native News Today. Between the 
Muscogee Creek Nation and the Forest <coughs> Band at a particular site, or was would it those were those occupied? Were did were they occupied at different times or? Forest Band never occupied the site. Never had any interest in it until 19. Uh, their lands were all down right along the uh, Florida Alabama <coughs> border, where their headquarters is today. Uh, after the War of 1813-14, uh, I still think they were the instigators of the Red Stick War. But, uh, Nonetheless, at the end of that conflict, they appeared <coughs> to Jackson for protection, and lands were set aside for them to live down there, separated from the rest of us by, gosh, 150, 200 miles. So, uh, there are a group of people who keep changing who they want to be. Back then, they didn't want to be creek. They wanted to be separate from the rest of us. When it was time for us to be removed in chains, they didn't want to be creek. They wanted to be separate from the rest of us. Now, all of a sudden, in the 1970s, with Indian Self-Determination Act and great society money flowing into recognized <coughs> tribes, all of a sudden, <coughs> oh, we want to be Indian again. And um, <coughs> They don't share our culture. They don't share our history. They, in many ways, uh, this animosity has been going on since around 1800. They wanted to be separate. They did not want to live in the tribal laws. So the council said, okay, you can live down there. Now, just don't let any Indians into the territory. Well, that's the first thing they did. And that is why when the council would not send out a, a band to enforce the laws, the Red Sticks themselves sent a band to enforce the laws and drive off the non-Indians. And that was called the uh, massacre at uh, Fort Mims. I think what, um, what needs to be brought into this, there was really no such thing as a Fort Mims Creek Indians not being federally recognized until 1984. There were a group of people that lived in South Alabama, and they didn't even come to the forefront until we had, the Muscogee Nation had, had, had uh, won a Fort Jackson case. And it was for payment that had never been paid to our people for the lands in, the, in Alabama. And it was on the Fort Jackson, and that's when they came in and said, hey, well, we're Creeks too, and so we should share on this. Had been in, on file and filed with the bureau, I guess, way back in the 1930s, and then in the 19 was in the 60s, and then it finally it came to an end, and then they said, well, we want to share in that too. Even then, they still federally recognized. They were just a group of people that lived there in South Alabama. Yes. And so, as far as having a connection with Hickory Ground, no, they have not ever had like these people here. It's sad to see today that some of our leaders, our own traditional leaders, they've been doing it only for about 15 years. You know, trying to be deceiving about it, but I've, I've tried to it many times. And I've <coughs> met with some people, and I'm the only involved from here traditional. That's a sad situation. As when our elders spoke, never take our traditions that way. If you're going to move, you always move. Or you always move parallel from your original location. But never go back. That's what they said. But now we have leaders today going back and trying to misinform and mislead. But what it is to me is money talks. Mm -hmm. so that's it.
situation. Well, weeks ago, we went to the uh, Oklahoma Tax Commission. And they're not the federal government, but they are the state government. We went up there for some uh, hearing on rules and regulations on tobacco compacts. All the Indian representatives got up their their uh, testimony against at these rules and regulations. once they got through the states as well we appreciate you all coming but it's not going to change our mind a bit we've already decided what we were going to do it was just a formality and you know uh, in the federal government there's a trust lawsuit the collection lawsuit on trust issues on violations of property money accounts so forth and so on and that's a big deal that the federal government cannot even resolve and don't be involved in however that is an ongoing case and I imagine at some point in time there will be some resolution to it but because of this, and because of the way our tribe has been treated in the past can't trust them. We never have been able to. Andrew Jackson would sign a treaty with the tribe and these were in the they were a confederacy. The, the it was a confederacy down in the southeast but each individual tribe. And then he'd come turn around and men, women, and children try to, you know, eliminate the tribe. Our tribes have gone on and on. They, 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 tribes, they don't have a written history or a written constitution or rules and regulations come from word of mouth. And that's the way it's been transmitted through the ages. So, you know, that's uh, it's something that really, this 106, it, it started back in 1995. And now, getting a representative up here to go through the process that's just another thing that builds up among the people that we cannot trust what's going on are we just a formality or are we going to get something done you know that's, and that's what they want you're, you're going to make to the chairman and and the the only <clears throat> the only recommendation you can make is to, to deny that management contract as the only correct and informed decision based, right. on, based on this testimony today uh, and if, if, if you don't have a clear understanding remain here as long as you want to we, we can all these people can stay here all day long if, if, in order for you to to better understand uh, uh, our connection Muskogee Nation, the Hickory Ground people uh, of today and their connection to that site and the open. that's what we want to gain today and there can be only one there can only be one decision that management contract uh, that would be the true and correct and informed decision and it is your job uh, to make that recommendation to the chairman they uh, it's not like they walked over here on the truck here with us they may be gone but I believe they're still they're still there and uh, any kind of buildings they want to put on there are kind of disturbing it's not like they're gone they're, they're still there the creator gave us that you know. I don't think the Fort Creek understands stuff like that I'm saying it goes way beyond environmental tests and all the computer data, whatever that test is, they run, you know, they run. It goes, way beyond, it goes beyond things that we can't explain and, you know, y'all can't see, we can't see, but they're there. So you run all the tests you want and it ain't going to make a difference, really. And we can see how important it is to the chairman here today. How come he ain't here? It shows you how important this meeting is to him. He don't, he don't see how we really feel, you know. Yeah. That was a comment I was going to make. You can't, uh... <coughs> The way we feel, you have to be here to see yourself and make a big decision. I just want to check down. I think we call it ground, we let show the environmental side. Show him that he 
these things still going? If you want to do this, you need to go um, build a casino or something on your own grave. That's the way we feel about it, and I don't think you would do that to your grandmother and people that are passed away. And uh, we're strongly against this, and uh, we're dealing with something that beyond anything else. I'd just like to say, uh, even though we're over here, the spirits are still there. Anything you do, the Creator gave us that land. And uh, I don't think the Creator meant for people to be over there gambling right on that sacred land. And I think by doing what y'all been thinking about doing is, is really going to disturb them and make them mad. And I, I don't think it's right. And it'd be like us digging up your grandma and putting a casino on top of her. <clears throat> Or, um, we would never do that, would we? No. Or, like, if y'all had, if y'all's Christians and y'all's had y'all's church and y'all wouldn't like it, if we come down and tear down your church and build a casino on top of it, that's about like it, how it's doing, how we feel about it. Sit down with this Brad guy for <coughs> three weeks straight and he still would never be able to understand what, what we really mean. You know, we could sit there and tell him a hundred things, you know, over and over and still wouldn't be understand like he could if the chairman was here and went down and visited our stomp ground which is the same fire that came from the hidden ground that they're trying to build on. And uh, I feel very important, and there's no possible way he can make a decision, because it's like if he was going to buy a car, he wouldn't just talk to the salesman over the phone and then pay the cash and have it sent to him. You know, he's got to go look at the car, check it over, you know, just like any normal, you know, it's just the way it is. And that's exactly, what, you know, that's what I mean by you need to be here, there's no way you can make a decision. And, and it's something that, you know, of this nature, which is more important to us than anything in the world. Well, that's going to conclude another exciting edition of Native News Today. We do want to bring a point, a message to you that uh, there is the Pow Wow of Champions that's happening in Tulsa, Oklahoma mm -hmm. this weekend at the Mavie Center there at the ORU campus. Pow Wow of Champions, always an annual event. Looks like they found their home there at the Mavie Center. Big time event, you know, got to house it in a big time place like the Mavie Center. And you might even have a Kyle Taylor signing around there somewhere. <laughs> you usually do on the Powell House. That's right. I'm sure <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. Well, it's going to be a great week. I hope you have one out there, everyone. want to mm -hmm. thank you guys, as always, for ch uh, checking in with us here and uh, getting some of your native news today fixed out of the way. Hey, if you can't get us on the television screen, that's all right. Lots of opportunities to catch Native News Today 24-7 live stream on the Creek Nation homepage. You can go to our Facebook page and see some list of stories and what we're doing on a daily basis as well as our Twitter feed. Don't forget to check out that story archive too. Gerald? In the meantime, you all take care. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Uh, yes, and the wind was there. Birds are straight. Well,